All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. This is Brother D uh, with DevotedTI.com, and this is a free conference call fellowship study. I'm here with brothers and sisters who you will get to hear their names as we go along. And right now we're in the book of Judges, chapter 10. And uh, I'm going to be reading from the web. I got brothers and sisters reading from different versions. Sefer, uh, Besorah, Hallelujah Scriptures, ISR, um, Restored King James, and uh, many others. Septuagint, Brother Doug with the Septuagint. <laughs> uh, so Judges chapter 10, I'm going to start off our reading for today. And I also like keeping a, a new King James in front of me, a physical one. This new King James study Bible I've had since I was uh, a young adult. I would say probably 19 or 20 years old. So I only keep it, you know, just in case there's something in here that might be beneficial. Um, I like the titles. I like the breakups between the chapters. If I don't have to read a whole entire chapter, if there's certain themes in a chapter, I'd like to break it up piece by piece and digest it and, and contemplate over it versus reading an entire chapter and then forgetting what we read. So for Judges chapter 10, let's see. All right, there's a lot of breakups. So I'm not going to break up a verse or two. Um, we have uh, Tola, verse 1 and 2. Then we have Jer. These are names of, of people. Uh, verse 3 to 5, we have Yisrael oppressed again, verse 6 and on. So I'm going to read a few chapters. Actually, I'm going to read this whole chapter. Okay? Yeah, we'll read the whole thing one shot. Okay. Judges chapter 10, verse 1. After Abimelech, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, arose to save Yisrael. Hallelujah. For the people Yahuwah raises up to save his people. He lived in Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim. He judged Yisrael. Isn't it funny that salvation is connected with judging? This is very, very important for us to, 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 to see this. Um, you know, a lot of people say that you shouldn't, don't judge. Thou shalt not judge. The scripture says, Thou shalt not judge lest ye be judged. <laughs> and they're getting that from Mark, uh, Mark chapter 7. And what they're missing is uh, to read the rest of that chapter. Because the rest of that chapter, it says, uh, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you'll be able to take the plank out of your brother's eye. I'm sorry, it's not Mark chapter 7. I think it's Matthew chapter 7. Let me see it real quick for us. Yep, Matthew chapter 7, the famous Christian passage that people like to quote, saying, don't judge me. There it is. My wife is already on it. Matthew 7 correcting me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it says, don't judge so that you won't be judged. But they, they, they don't read the rest. It says, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but you don't consider the beam that is in your own eye? So here's somebody who's trying to correct somebody on something that they need correction on themselves. And probably even worse. Verse 5, You hypocrite, first remove the beam out of your own eye, then you can clearly remove, or in other words, then you can clearly judge your brother, then you can clearly remove the speck out of your brother's eye. So that's the context there. And but people like to we live in a culture where it's very non judgmental, right? A lot of tolerance. And um that's what we're dealing with. And the Christian church is really very worldly for the most part and they're just like the world. So they have that same mentality of don't judge and 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 and, and you you're making me feel bad and and Jesus is about love, and, and we should be loving and forgiving all the time and merciful. Anyway, I'll get off of that. Judges chapter 10. We can see here 
salvation is is connected with judgment. So this man, Tola, judged Israel 23 years. For 23 years he was judging Israel. And then he died and was buried in Shamir. After him, Jer, the Gil, the Gileadite, arose. He judged Israel 22 years. He had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkey colts. It's a lot of sons. They had 30 cities, which are called Havoth, Jer, to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. Jer died and was buried in Kamon. The children of Israel again did that which was evil in Yahuwah's sight and served the Baals and Asherahs, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the children of Ammon, the gods of the Philistines, and the gods of the Philistines. They abandoned Yahuwah and did not serve him. Verse 7, Yahuwah's anger burned against Yisrael, and he sold them into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the children of Ammon. Here we go. We're starting to see Yahuwah um, being consistent with what he said he would do if Yisrael disobeyed his commandments. This is part of the, the law of Moses. This is part of the covenant. This is part of the contract. This is part of the terms and conditions. And Yahuwah is doing his part. Notice, after how, how long? So far in this chapter, we saw, what, maybe like 40 or 60-something years between these three men. So Yahuwah waits. <laughs> He's got patience. Whoever says that Yahuwah is not merciful in the Old Testament has not read the scriptures. He's long-suffering and abounding in loving kindness. And that's, that's in the Old Testament. So he sold them into the Philistines and into the hand of the children of Ammon. Verse 8, they troubled and oppressed the children of Israel that year. For 18 years they oppressed all the children of Israel that were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. The children of Ammon passed over the Jordan to fight also against Yahuda and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Yisrael was very distressed. I just want to say, uh, I don't know if anybody caught this, but for those of us who are familiar with the two-house study, uh, the split of Israel splitting into two kingdoms, uh, the northern uh, kingdom being called the house of Ephraim or the house of Israel and which makes up ten tribes out of the twelve. And then the south kingdom is called the house of Judah, the house of Yehuda, and it makes up the tribes of Benjamin and Yehuda. Very interesting that in this one verse we kind of get a, I, I see a picture that even though this hasn't, the split hasn't happened yet. The split hasn't happened yet. But it's, I thought that was cool that it's it's already in the works. Now I'm not sure here if it's if it when it says against the house of Ephraim if it's talking about uh, the specific tribe. It's probably most likely is the house of Ephraim. So that Israel was very distressed. And verse 10 it says the children of Israel cried to Yahuwah saying, "We have sinned against you." even because we have forsaken our Elohim and have served the Baals. Yahuwah said to the children of Israel, Didn't I save you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines? The Sidonians also and the Amalekites and the Maonites, Maonites, oppressed you and you cried to me and I saved you out of their hand yet you have forsaken me and served other gods therefore I will save you no more ouch verse 14 go and cry to the gods which you have chosen let them save you 
in the time of your distress. The children of Israel said to Yahuwah, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems good to you. Only deliver us, please, today. They put away the foreign gods from among them and served Yahuwah, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Yisrael. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead. The children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. Mizpah. The people, the princes of Gilead, said to one another, Who is the man who will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. All right, so if anybody has a question or a comment, press star six. Star six, where is my my box? Where is my Q&A box? Here it is. Brother Doug. Well, it was interesting when you were talking about judging, not judging. It kind of brought up something interesting um, to add to the scripture you brought up with Matthew 7. 1 Corinthians 6. Verse 2 to 3 says that we will judge angels. So shouldn't we be able to judge the little matters? Do you not know that the set-apart one shall judge, oh, shall judge the world? And if the world is judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? And verse 3 says, do you not, do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more matters of this life? Can you quote that passage again one more time? It's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 to 3. Awesome. Thank you, Brother Doug. Good point. No problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. Judgment starts in the house of Yahuwah. That's another passage there. Where is that? Who can find it? Let's see who gets there first. Who can find it? I want to say it's Shaul. Hmm. Oh, we got two people, Doug and Riley. First Peter chapter four, verse seventeen. For it for it is time for judgment to begin with Yahuwah's household. First Peter what? First Peter chapter four verse seventeen, and I want to think he's quoting from someone from a prophet. I I just can't figure it out right now. I'm trying to think who it could possibly be. And I know one of the prophets said the same exact thing because it is time for judgment. And if first sleep from us, what is the end of those who do not obey the good news of Yahuwah? So that's yeah. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Yeah. So, if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will happen to the ungodly or the, un, you know, unrighteous. the unrighteous and the sinner? Therefore, let them also who suffer according to the will of Yahuwah in doing good and trust their souls to him as to a faithful creator. Absolutely. And what is the good news? The good news is obey me and trust me and you will be blessed. Disobey me and you will be cursed. The good news is obey me and trust me and you'll be blessed. That's the good news. That's, that's a fantastic news. The good news is, I, I like a, the way one street preacher said it. He's like, I am preaching the good news. Because some people are like, you're preaching hate and you're preaching judgment. Yeah, I am preaching judgment and hate. I hate sin. The Creator hates sin. And it's good news that I'm telling you that the Creator is not going to destroy you for sinning. He'll actually show you mercy and kindness and give you grace and forgive your sins. That's good news that He's not going to destroy you. <laughs> and uh, wrote, uh, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 4 Hebrews chapter 4, uh, let's read this real quick. 
Hebrews chapter 4 says, Let us fear, therefore, lest perhaps any one of you should seem to have come short of a promise entering into his rest. For indeed, it says, For indeed, we have had the gospel preached to us, even as they also did. And the they here in context is talking about the Israelites in the wilderness under the authority of Moses. The Israelites in the wilderness received the gospel from the creator, Yahuwah. And the apostle here is saying, the author here is saying, we have had good news preached to us even as they also did, but the word that they heard did not profit them because it wasn't mixed with faith by those who heard. And with that, I yield. Thank you, Brother Doug, for getting that scripture. I'll go with miracles. I'm just thinking in this chapter, um, what struck me, I mean, our forefathers went after so many other Elohim, and then, you know, Yahoo's response and, and ten is, you know, we'll go after them. Go ahead, cry after them. Let them deliver you. I'm not going to deliver you. But when they actually repented and when they actually turned, you know, and put the strange mighty ones away from themselves, um, in verse 16, it says, you know, they put away the strange Elohim from among them and served Yahuwah, and his soul was grieved for misery of Yisrael. And it's just like, I, I, I think that this is the moment more so like a, a father relationship, like, you know what, you're, you're punishing your child. You don't necessarily want to in a, in a sense, um, but you know you have to so that they can learn, and then they turn around, and, and your heart is literally like, mourning after them they've done wrong and at the same time now they're trying to serve you and it's just like you his heart is just he has such a heart for his people he really 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 does like you know so i just want to to point that out yeah, that's a good point babe um uh me working in the social work field and having to teach these parents to discipline their children <laughs> i think was harder than teaching the kids good behavior <laughs> some mm -hmm. some of these parents struggled to discipline their kids they're like oh, i don't want to feel so bad he's in time out i'm so, oh my gosh i don't want to see him cry i was like listen uh, i understand that i understand your mom and and you hate to see your kids suffer a little bit you know but you got to discipline them and yahua he embraces both he disciplines but he also embraces that I hate to see them suffering like this. I, I, it's, ah, I hope they get it. They're only hurting themselves, you know. So yeah, good stuff. 